do you think the demand is going to I come think from? there's three main buckets of demand going forward. I think the first is just the passage of time. Look, every day that Bitcoin is still alive, another day goes by, it goes from scary and unknown to trusted and proven. Um, I think the second major bucket of, of demand is from central banks and institutions, which value it as a non-sovereign digital asset with absolute scarcity, so much in the way that Mike suggested digital gold. Um, and the third major bucket is tech demand. So this is demand for Bitcoin as programmable money. I mean, at the end of the day, Bitcoin is an open network. It's a platform that anybody can build on top of, and I think that's really compelling. So, Mike, what are the other indicators you're watching, perhaps indicators that show might show that a bear market was coming to an end. Well, this is where I like the a bit of a dichotomy with Spencer, because I agree with him a lot, but I look at it as a markets guy, not a technology guy. And you look at net, network value to transaction ratios, still very high. Actual transactions are near levels when Bitcoin was last around two, around 2000. You look at addresses used, they're basically at levels that are below the 2017 low, and that low was around 900. So these kind of indicators need to pick up. And technically, I'll actually, um, and in the past, they've been leading indicators. Then you look at things like volatility. Volatility is way too high for a typical Bitcoin bottom. Volatility needs to get probably to a new low. I'm looking for 15, maybe 20 percent. Currently, it's around 65 percent. Now, I have a chart here in the Bloomberg Spencer that shows the bounce that we saw uh, in the middle of, of 2017. Also shows the lows where we're at right now. Not so low necessarily historically. But what are some catalysts that could end a bear market or help the market fully recover, get to where you want it to be. Yeah, sure. I think it's a tinderbox right now, and I think pretty much anything could set it off. I mean, on the one hand, I mean, to go back to my earlier comment, I do think that we need a little bit more time to pass between the bull market of 2017 and where we are today. But I think in the meantime, again, things are setting up really nicely here. It could be anything like over the weekend, Cambridge Associates, which is a top advisor to pensions and endowments, put out a report that said, hey, institutions, it's time to allocate to crypto. Now, that probably means less than 1% of your total portfolio. But in terms of pensions and endowments, that's a sizable amount. Mike, what do we know about what JP Morgan is doing here with this coin and whether other banks will follow? Well, I think what Spencer mentioned is a key reason Bitcoin jumped this weekend. What JP Morgan is doing is significant because, number one, it adds more supply to the space, but it's going in the space that really is what's the trend in the space, the trend towards stability and stable coins for a proper transaction store value or a currency. That what I th that's what I think JP Morgan's focusing on. It's potentially competition for Ripple, but overall, that's what's happening in the space. And if you look at the most successful coin so far in terms of market cap, it's Tether. Tether's the biggest stable coin. That's what this, the play, space needs. As Spencer needs, it needs time, probably needs volatility to decline, and needs to become more stable. Spencer, what are the coins to watch and the coins to stop watching? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I do agree with some of the points that they're making where uh, it's going to take more time for the recovery. I think that the recovery for the crypto markets is going to take much longer. And in a previous video, I mentioned that if you don't own any Bitcoin, I think it, you know under 4000 is a great price. But I would be looking to increase my Bitcoin position. And I do believe that Bitcoin will go under 3000 and uh, if you can wait, I would wait to make more purchases if they hit a new all-time low. But if you don't own any crypto, I would definitely get into it. And I have also recommended that if you own crypto, you might as well also own another commodity that I recommend, which is gold and silver and palladium. So if you don't own any of those other uh, precious metals, I, I do feel like that's very important to have in your portfolio. Um, but let me know your thoughts on this, and I will talk to you guys soon.